Hey, it's Clay. Before we get to this episode, I talked about this last week, but I want to offer up another reminder. We've had some good success so far, but I've launched uh, an online boot camp f- focusing around health and fitness and just kind of getting your body right. Because when you get your body right, you can get your mind right. And when you get your mind right, that is really going to help you with trading because trading is a, a very mentally taxing, a mentally challenging business. And when you are going into a mentally challenging business, it's common sense to say, well, what can I do to make my mind as strong as possible? And it, there's no really you know, rocket science behind it. A great way to get your mind as strong as possible is you got to have just a healthy body. I mean, it's much easier to be mentally tough, to have a, you know, mental fortitude when you're just feeling good about yourself, when your body's just feeling good in general, uh, not to mention just getting better sleep at night. And that's what health can bring to the table. And that's what I've had personal experience with. If you're not familiar, uh, a few years ago, I totally lost control of my health and I, I really fell off, kind of fell off the wagon. And the interesting part about my journey is you could track all this if you wanted to week by week by week due to the YouTube channel that I've run for several years now. If you were to go back to a few years ago and watch those videos, you would notice I, I'm looking quite a bit different than what I look right now. So it's one of those situations where, Clay, come on, you're just trying to sell something. Where's the proof it actually works? And the proof is literally out there publicly for anybody to go through the journey with me if, if you really want to. I mean, I, I'd recommend you don't necessarily go through each of the hundreds of videos that are out there. But like I said, if you're that big of a skeptic, then uh, you are by all means welcome to go and do that. So I hope you consider it. I hope you uh, decide to, to come aboard with me and you know join the boot camp. We have a great online community now that's starting to form. And that's the idea behind it, to motivate each other, to inspire one another, and just to to hang out. And since we're all striving towards the same goal of not only gaining back the health, but then also maintaining that health after we've gained it. So if you're interested in learning more about the boot camp, which is six weeks and it's all online, go to maintainthegains.com. Again, maintainthegains.com. I hope to see you there. Let's get to the episode. This is a Stock Train Reality Podcast, episode 208. Because I don't want to have more money just going directly into my trading account. I want to have it build up in a savings account first and then maybe take a percentage of that and put it back in the trading to help it grow. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. He really wants to make you aware of a certain page on his site, Clay Trader. And that page is called The Personal Disclaimer. And it's right down at the bottom of every single uh, page on the website. And what I do there is I just kind of lay things out, my attitude toward toward things, what you should be expecting, uh, you know, what sort of mindset you should have, and kind of what the market is about and what it's not about, what it takes, what it doesn't take and pretty much just lays it out there flat. And I mean, I, I don't, I'm not like mad at people uh, when they come in because I realize it's just a little link at the bottom of the, of, of the site. But sometimes we were like, well, no, I, I have a disclaimer towards all that, my personal disclaimer. I mean, so I'm not sure why you're, you're throwing that into my face when I offer the disclaimer. But like I said, to be fair, it's not like the disclaimer is totally, you know, in your face on the website or anything like that. But again, yeah, down at just the bottom portion of the website, one of those links, is my personal disclaimer to you. So give that a look and maybe, maybe it's it's my own fault, I guess, for making it kind of smaller than what it is. But I did wanna make you aware of it, that if you kinda want a, 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 a nutshell, if you want a snapshot of what I'm all about, of what the site's all about, and indirectly, I suppose, what the podcast is all about, and then you know read that personal disclaimer and that does a good job of summarizing that. Today we are talking uh, with, well, me, 40, Chez, a little bit of background, and you'll hear this again at the beginning, but he, he got sick. He got so he ate some bad chicken, I guess, and um, he, he sent me a message. Sorry, Chez, I don't mean to laugh at you. I just, I know how it feels, and it, that's just not good for anybody, but he sent me a message a little bit before we got started, uh, and it is what it is, so it's just me and our guest, uh, Hey 40 Mike is his name, but he goes by Hey 40 I call him 40 and he has been around for years now. Literally, this is his third podcast, so a second welcome back. And as I, I allude to when we talk about in the discussion itself, he's, he's he's been around and he survived. And that in and of itself is something to be applauded because given how cutthroat and how brutal 
these markets actually are. You know, that that's a nice sign of, uh, that's just, that's refreshing, uh, you know, to know in and of itself. But, and I love all our guests, so don't get me wrong, but this was a really, really good discussion. 40, as far as I'm concerned, he has found the holy grail of trading. And I get, you may think that's clickbait when he gets there, but in my mind, it is the holy grail. It's that perfect area. It's that sweet spot where, where you need to be mentally in order to give yourself the best chance at success. And we talk about that quite a bit. But yeah, I, I don't have any problem going as far as calling it, you know, kind of the true holy grail of trading. And we talk about a lot of other stuff, but 40, yeah, so many good topics that we talk about. I don't want to ruin anything, so we'll just get started with it. I will note, though, that I kind of caught him off guard, and we just started the recording um, right off the get-go, so it's nothing quote-unquote official. But given this is the third time uh, we've talked, I figured we'd just go things a little bit more casual. So let's sit down with 40. Something is going around, apparently. I guess so. You know, it just, it just kind of hit me this morning, but I'll be fine. It just, you know, I'm a little congested, so I might sound a little bit, um, you know, muffled. No, that's okay. I mean, you you did boxing. You're a boxer. I, I'm I'm sure you can tough it out. I mean, <laughs> I, let me put it this way. I'm sure you've been in uh, much worse situations than this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Apparently, I mean, a little cold. We're just getting punched in the face. I don't know. But uh, uh, did you did you make any trades today? Yeah, I got a couple of trades. I think I actually have one open. I'm like, hey, can can you hear that? My my computer's like uh, beeping a little bit. Do you hear that at all? No, I don't hear anything. Uh, I just don't want to cut it in. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually shorting AMD right now. I got open puts on LEN and I'm shorting LULY right now. About to take profits in LULY. L-U-L-Y? Yeah. L-U-L-Y? No, you mean Lulu? Oh, L-U-L-U? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, Ooh, Okay. I, I just got out of it actually. Boom. Here we go. Uh, puts, I would assume? I'm sorry? Did you get puts on it, or what was the trade? No, th this one I was just trading 100 shares. I was shorting it. Oh, okay. Where'd you short it at? I shorted it Let me at... guess. Let me try to guess. You you shorted the breakdown of 155.85. Uh, no. Let me, uh, hold on. Let me pull up exactly what I got it at. I think I got it right when it popped up for a second, right before uh, 156. Um, oh, on that little that little spike there around uh, ten eighteen ish. Yeah, I I just I've been scalping it pretty much. I uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I got it. At, actually, no, I got it at uh, one fifty six oh three. One fifty six. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I see what you're doing. You just uh, it, it shot up there and you. Yeah. So oh, you you probably you shorted the fifty on the two hundred or or on the two minute. Is that uh, what you did? Well, I was scaling in. I saw that fifty SMA coming in, so I started uh, a little uh, bit early, and I was going to add, but it just pulled back. Yeah, I see that. Nice, nice. And then, but you just you just now got out of it, or is that a separate trade? You? Uh, no, I literally just got out as we were talking. I was just trying to clear up some straight before we get started. Well, I mean, we didn't have to start early. I mean, if you wanted to watch this thing, you can't play the game of. You said you wanted to start early, Clay, and this cost me 300 bucks in profits. Uh, <laughs> nobody forced you to be here early. Are, can no, we no, agree no. on that, 40? Yeah, oh, we okay. can agree on that. No, it, it's fine. I actually I pulled 115 out of it because I, I got it on the bounce. Um, let me pull it up on the bigger one. Yeah, I got it on the bounce at 155.62, so I wrote it up and then got it out. and Yeah, so I've been pretty much just scalping it. Nice. Yeah, barely co covering yeah. commissions and whatnot, but, you know, it is all right. That one's kind of, I mean, I'll trade it every now and then, but it's kind of tricky, too. It's it, it, it can move odd at times, but, I mean, it's definitely a, a tradable one. It's got enough spread and stuff like that in it, which, I mean, you can scalp it, which is, uh, which is a positive. Yeah, but. pretty much all I've been doing is really scalping, man, and and I've I've found this like kind of like just little comfort zone I I have right now, which it's nothing big. I don't get really big winners anymore, but I, I'm I'm happy with it. Well, let me guess the opposite side of that. You probably don't also get big losses anymore, too. I mean, no, I, with big wins, I, I, I got to say some, my comes some pretty big losses, I would assume. Yeah, I, I got to say, um, my my win rate is pretty good right now. But when I do take a loss, um. You know, it's actually this week's been a red week for me. The last two days have been red days. Nothing much each day, usually around a hundred bucks loss on um, the last two in a row. But yeah, not not too bad. I I'm in like a, a very comfortable spot right now. I'm actually really happy with I, where I am. 
uh, more like just mentally with like low stress and whatnot with trading. So it's good. So before you got into this, <clears throat> before you got into this new groove, you were still kind of, you were feeling some, some of the mental weights that come along with, um, I guess we'll just, I mean, you were just feeling the mental weights there at, for a while. Kind of. Well, I see this is my theory on it before I was never really trading options and uh, I was just, you know, trading equities and putting out so much capital every time and being there all day. And you know what I mean? It, it just kind of like, I was always afraid to leave the computer, but now that I, you know, started trading options, it kind of fills that gap. I usually only trade for like the first hour. Um, sometimes only the first half an hour, to be honest. And then I'm kind of off. And then usually in the midday, I start to open up some contracts and I use that as a swing to kind of fill that void in between. And um, so like, I'm just not looking for giant wins anymore because I have these like little, all these little trades that kind of add up. So, I don't and know. your, your rationale between, uh, for just trading the first 30 minutes to an hour, is that because I know a couple of days ago you mentioned you had to get to the gym. It, does that have something to do with it or is that just, no, absolutely. Uh, you a, hit the nail a, on the a head. choice on your part. You hit the nail on the head. Um, I have to fill up my day because you know, I, I don't, I don't really work during the day and I only work weekends, weekend nights. Um, so if I'm not doing anything, I'm stuck into the computer just naturally. Like I, I just got, you know, it's a little bit of addiction, I guess you could say. So I try to fill up my day, you know, by 1030, I'm usually heading out towards the gym. I usually get back around one. I might come back and scalp a couple of things, but usually I'll just open up a con couple of contracts for a couple of swings and just, you know, let it ride and, and wait for the next morning. So, so I guess I, why exactly where did this hour number come from why why not schedule the gym for example at let's just say 11 30 or or 12 why 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 schedule the gym you know within your day at, at, at 10 30 well a couple of different reasons one this is more of a personal reason um i am kind of i do intermediate fasting workouts so i usually um don't eat and if i wait too much later in the day i start my body will get a little bit weaker and i won't be able to perform to my best but um, also just because throughout, because it's it's been like it's been a while, man. Now it's been like it's been like four or five years been trading. So I've just well, kinda, we've known each other for how long? I mean, this is your third appearance on the show. I think three and, years I've been with you. Yeah, I mean, and we've met twice. We met in uh, in Denver, Florida, yeah, in and Denver. in Denver. Yep. And I gave you a good spanking in Top Golf, so that was uh, that was enjoyable. <laughs> We have one opening near us now uh, in Rhode Island. We have one opening, so I'm going to practice. Do you? Yeah. Oh well, hey, <laughs> uh oh, I better I better watch. Well, maybe we'll have to do a meetup in uh, in, in Rhode Island. <laughs> but yeah, I was I was I was going to say you're so one of the rare people that because uh, unfortunately some people, as I, I'm I'm sure you realize, they just you you see them in the chat room, you see them in the chat room, and then they're just kind of poof gone in the night. Not that that necessarily means they've blown up their account or anything like that. I mean that that's maybe a, a too much of a jump, but. Yeah, you've definitely, we know for sure that you are still alive and well in the markets going on. I'm trying to think. I don't remember back to episode your first episode that you were on. But, I think it was 99. Uh, in, it, was it? Okay. Um, so you got, you. so you've been in the market, what'd you say, about five years now? Yeah, like four or five years, something like that, like actively. Okay. And and then you've been, you know, with the community for three of those years. Okay, cool. And um, now I, I, you made a comment earlier on. I want to touch base on you were you were kind of going for the big wins and all that. So where exactly or when did that necessarily start? Because I I'll be honest, I don't quite remember where we left off with your second podcast appearance. But we're I guess how long were you on that road of uh, seeking out bigger wins compared to right now, where you're more so just like you're saying, going for kind of slow and steady wins. Well, actually, huh? Are we rolling right now? Oh yeah, we've been rolling this whole time, man. Oh, Is that okay? Hey, hey, you, that's fine. You... No, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get a little bit more natural feel to it, but uh, yeah, no. I was just like, I, I felt like should I give him a warning? But I was like, I don't know, it's forty, so I don't think he would be offended if I just. Nah, you no, know, nah, it doesn't matter. I just, the... I just wasn't sure. But um, no. But to answer your question, yeah, no. So I think I was chasing um those big wins for the, the majority of my of my trading um you know experience right now. Um, this is only really. Like I've only had this new state of mind for like probably like last year, maybe year and a half, um, of not having to hit a home run every time. But it just became, you know, it just became a high stress of always trying to hit these huge home runs. And when you're day trading equities, it's super tough. Like, you know, you you can definitely hit these awesome runs that run for you know ten, fifteen, twenty percent runs. 
but they're far and few between. And to hold a position all the way through that run up, which is kind of like a lot more stress than I wanted to. And then um, basically what I started doing is instead of trying to hit these like huge home runs and having these huge positions, um, I started scaling into, into positions just really small size and I trade only really large caps. So, you know, they can move a dollar or two pretty easily. So when you're only working with like 100 shares, sometimes 50 shares, you know, especially like stuff like Tesla, which I usually only buy like 20 to 40 shares a piece when I'm trading, you can still get a good return off of it. And I scale in, um, you know, in the community, you guys would know this, this um, you know, terminology. I consider myself a faded rubber band man trader. <laughs> you know, um, I, I like that faded rubber band man trader. I would That's, say you should just change your alias to that, but hey, 40 is like, it's a staple around that. So you can't change your alias, but yeah, I like that. Stuck. That's a good kind of summary of the, I'm a fading rubber band man trader. Yeah, I like that. That's that's what I like. Um, and, I, and again, that's why I like the first hour of the day. Um, you know, usually I won't really put on a trade for the first five, 10 minutes. But once I see something really, you know, swinging to a high or a low on the extreme end, it'll catch my my eye. And, uh, you know, using what I have set up in my chart, a couple of indicators and whatnot, a couple of studies, um, you know, I'll act accordingly. And I usually scale into my trades. The only problem that I've had with that um, scaling in is my commissions are a lot higher. And for something, my account size, that does definitely um, take notice on my overall bottom line. Well, I... I don't want to speak for you, but I'm assuming right now you're not necessarily doing this all. It's not like you. this is what's paying the bills per se. I mean, because I know you have a, a job, which is good. So it's not like, is it safe to say that you're more so concerned about kind of just the habits and, and establishing the groove and establishing the right mindset right now? Or are you actually trying to pay? I mean, what is your mindset? Because I mean, I get it. If you're trying to pay the bills, well then yeah, those commissions are really going to be dragging things down. But if you're just trying to build a scalable system and, you know, just kind of get your mindset where you want it to be, then it's probably not that big of a deal. So I'm assuming given that you do have a job, like you said, this is not, uh, you know, your, your, your primary source of income. No, definitely not. And if it was, um, my stress would be a lot higher. And to be honest, I, I really wouldn't be able to afford, um, you know, my lifestyle or just even a decent lifestyle at that. Um, what I, what I pretty much been doing with this and, with trading, I mean, um, I haven't really been growing my accounts that much as I as I wanted to in the past. Before, in my head, like the only thing I had, my goal was not really to pay myself, but more or less to grow my account to this huge, massive size. And in my head, it was as soon as I get to this massive size, I'll be able to, uh, you know, make huge trades, huge money, and be living the good life and all of that. But really, over the years, you know that. That dream, that's exactly what I'm going to call it, that dream is kind of faded out. And I keep my um, I keep my account pretty pretty much the same size throughout the year, And I, but I pay myself, and it's really, really nice to do that. Um, you know, like I, I have two accounts set up that I use both actively for trading, um, and one's pretty much just day, tra day trading equities, and another one's option. Um, I have to keep them separate. It gets a little bit messy. I tried keeping them in the one, and, and I didn't like it. But... Um, like with the options specifically, I keep a very small account with options. Um, in my history so far, I don't really need a large account. And sometimes that larger account, um, I naturally put on larger positions, which again, my stress comes into play. I'm trying to stay very self-aware of that. I don't want trading to affect the quality of my life, my mental stress and all that. So um, I pretty much been using these smaller accounts in my day trade account, uh, you know, which is obviously over PDT, so it's a, it's a decent account from from my from myself, but uh, I don't make much. You know, I've done the math, and out of all the commissions, the tax, and losses, I usually only make like fifty bucks to like one hundred fifty a day. If I'm making over two hundred, that's an awesome day. And when I do make something like that, say say I have like a two three hundred dollar day, you know, and I have um like a like say like an insurance bill, or or I got to pay my cable. I have no problem just withdrawing that out of my account and paying that bill and, and going on with my day. You know what I mean? It's it's a nice little thing I'd have to take out of my, my checkings account. And same with if I want to – me and my girlfriend want to go on like a, a vacation. If I have an awesome return on a couple of option contracts I have, well, you know, that's some fun money. You know, some of it I will leave in my account and let it grow. 
but I'll be honest, I, I usually take out the majority of it and I enjoy life. I enjoy, um, you know, the money I earned from trading. I don't want to keep it locked away in this account. But um, so, yeah, so I, I'm really happy with where I'm going right now. I like I like this a lot. And in, in fact, I maybe we've had it in other forms, but I appreciate the fact that you're just literally taking what the market gives you and then you're taking that money and you're not like trying to parlay it into big things or you're just, hey, an insurance bill. Hey, I have some extra money. Awesome. And I, I have, I don't really follow people on Instagram, but I'll confess, I have checked out Forty's account because like I said, I've met him a couple of times and I, I will attest, you do travel. So that's that totally makes sense that you would be taking some money out to, to travel with. Um, oh no, I've met her twice. I can't remember her name. What is her it's name? It's Megan. Megan, oh, Megan, if you listen to this, for you, you can slap me next time we're at a meet and greet, <laughs> Megan. I apologize, uh, but I have seen Forty and Megan, you know, with their on their excursions, and but that's a really smart way to go about it. And I understand where you started. I think most people start that way uh, due to a lot of the, the things you see out there with the fanciness of things. But really, it sounds like you've you've uh, obtained the ultimate wealth right now. And like you said, I I love your you know saying quality of life. And you've kind of found that middle ground of, hey, it's not like I'm driving around in a Lambo, but I'm knocking out an insurance bill, going on some vacations. And most importantly, I have peace of mind. And this is all due to a big factor of this is probably that job you work, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I work in fine dining and I bartend on the weekends. And, um, you know, my hours are awesome there. I go in at 430 and I usually get up by nine or 10. So it's, in, it's not late nights. And, but it's 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 good money. It covers a lot of my overhead, um, just like life expense, expenses. So when I am making a trade, you know, like I said with the insurance, if I have a good trade and I have some extra money, I'll pay that insurance bill. But I'm not making that trade because I have this insurance bill coming up and I'm like, you know, frank, frantically looking for a dollar to pay it. Just kind of, you know, uh, either way, I'm, it's going to be paid. One, I will have to either go to work and bartend for a little bit. Or I'll make a, a good trade that week, and you know, just get it out of the way. And, I want and listeners. I, I want listeners to listen to something. It, it was it was minor, but it is a massive concept that you need to understand as traders. If you show up, and and I say this because it happens. Maybe you're thinking the same thing. Maybe you're thinking the market is some sort of solution. The market is a solution to grow money, to create money, to create you know some fun money, like Forty says. The market is not a solution to get you more money in the sense of well, I have an insurance bill that I have to pay. So let me go Let me go try to trade right now. Or I have a bunch of debt. So the solution is, let me go trade the market to pay that debt. No, that's not, the, that's not what the market is intended for. And y- you get yourself into way too many problems if, you're, if your idea is, I have debt or I have bills to pay. Oh, look, I can stay at home and make this money. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to trade the markets because we see all sorts of stuff in the customer service world where it's, People give us stories about why they're getting into the market. And don't get me wrong, it's great. People should be focused on the markets because that is how that is one way you can generate wealth and expand your money. But when you're in debt or you have bills to pay, you know, why don't you, your your main focus is going to be ticker symbol J O B because J O B is a guaranteed paycheck. And uh, so that is a huge thing that he is uh, he beautifully summarizes. He's not making a trade to pay the insurance bill. He's already got money for that. He's just making a trade because, well, he doesn't want to squander every dollar he has. He want he understands that you can make money with money, or in other words, by trading. Um, and that's a, a huge differentiator where uh, you have zero chance of success if you show up and you you know you're approaching the markets needing to pay for something. Were you ever at that spot though, Forty? Did you have, uh, did you ever approach the market says like, oh, I, I have this bill, therefore I'm going to trade to pay this bill? Absolutely. Um, you did. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, I, I did not remember. So you speak from both sides of the coin then. Yep. So, um, so, so for a couple of times, um, so again, like, you know, I'm in, I'm in the restaurant industry and where I live, it's very seasonal. And when I see very seasonal, I literally mean like, there's usually like between three and four months out of the year when you're making like really good money. And I, for a while, for a couple last couple of years, um, and I work on the water. So a lot of these restaurants just close down during the winter. And before, you know, I would always find side jobs and like this and that to kind of make up. But, you know, this is probably going back about two years ago. um, 
I was like, you know what? I got some money saved up. I'm laid off. Uh, I'm not going to really try to find any side gigs or nothing like that. And I did try for one winter tr- to just make trading my um, like my income. You know, what I mean, I was still, I still had that that dream in my head. I'm like, yeah, I can I can make this work and be nothing. And this is also just for um, some like background. This is also on like a thirty thousand dollar account, so nothing like huge. And uh, I ended up, you know, taking some big losses. I uh, actually, you know what? Let me rewind. I actually ended up doing decent and then I did take some big losses. Um, and then that's just when I, you know, was like, okay, I got to get right back and I got to find another gig, found a winter job, then went back to a summer job. Um, so yeah, I did have that point and it kind of just made me realize that trading is very hard. Trading is a very um, tough thing. That's why, you know, obviously not many can, can, you know, be profitable at it, but why making tougher and harder by having like your, your life literally depending on it, you know, on every trade. Um, so again, it all just trickles back to the stress of it all. Um, you know, I had that happen for a little bit for a winter, but um, it just, it wasn't worth the stress. Like trading's tough. Why make it tougher? I love that's a great quote. <laughs> trading's already hard enough. So why why introduce more variables into the equation that are, are definitely going to make it tougher? And I, I also think, I mean, I, I'm just thinking out loud here, but you mentioned, you know, a lot of people fail. And I think a lot of people probably do fail because they don't find the balance that you have found, meaning literally take what the market gives. If the markets, I know you use the word, well, I only make like 50 to hundred bucks a day, but I mean, I run the math on that real quick. Let's just take 50 bucks a day. That's 250 extra bucks a week. And I mean, to you as listeners, I, I get it. Oh, $50 a day. I saw such and such on social media. Well, cal- calm down here a second. What could you do with an extra 250 bucks in your pocket? And that is, like Forty says, after commissions, after taxes, cold, hard cash. What, what, what could you do? I can think of a lot of things with $250. And that is, you know, he says it's not every day. Some days it's a little bit more. But even in that situation, I, and I think that really is the key, Forty, which you've really nailed is you have to, in fact, maybe that'll be that episode name. Take what the market gives because that is essential. Would you, would you agree that's basically kind of the... The, the viewpoint and, and your approach to all this is you're just, you're not trying to force anything. You're literally taking whatever is available out there. And then you're just kind of applying that in a very real world sense as, oh, look, an insurance bill. I mean, is that, is, you're literally taking what the market gives. Is that fair? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, these small wins are small wins, but they add up, they add up and they're, you know, it, you, you did the trade right. Might as well pay yourself out of it, you know? If if you if you made a, a profit, there's no shame in just taking that little bit out and, and going with it. You know, um, to try to hit these these you know like like you said social media like gains that you see you know a thousand five thousand every single day. If you're gonna be chasing that, like that's exactly what you're gonna just be doing. It's just chasing. You know, um, the odds are not in your favor in that. So might as well just cut yourself a, a nice little slice of pie rather than take the whole thing. You know, because it's going to add up. It's going to add up. Well, actually, it's it's what and I, I'm guilty, which is why I'm bringing this up. But you say, you know, so it's a small gain. But I, I don't know how what defines small, because as I think about this, let's figure out the context of this, quote unquote, small, which, you know, 40 use the word. And I agreed with, you know, I at first I was just like, yeah, that's kind of a small win. But wait a second. So you made a small win of fifty dollars for sitting at home. And I mean, you don't have to tell me what, you know, uh, just sitting at home in comfortable clothes and you're pressing buttons and then you literally walk away with $50. I mean, let's equate that to people that make $10 an hour. I mean, 40 is doing that in, let's just call it an hour uh, where other people have to drive someplace. So there, there's costs there. They have to, you know, actually get dry. I mean, to go to a job and have to work five hours to make that $50, I really, I don't know what actually defines small. I think small is a little bit more subjective than, um, and I don't know the answer to that. But does that make sense, Forty? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like we should be absolutely all of us as, as traders should be for, should be giving ourselves a little bit more credit because, I mean, the amount the amount of time that you could generate fifty dollars or even a hundred, I don't know. That I think some people might consider that actually actually somewhat large. No, and and I agree with you when I say small. Um, I guess. I guess in a sense, I'm a little bit like, I wouldn't say brainwashed, but you know, the majority. Um, of no, I, that's my point thinking, is I think I'm brainwashed yeah. to us. It's like, wait, what actually is small? Like what, when all of a sudden does something go from small to big? It's like, I don't know if you stop and think about it, $50 for, you know, the context of what you're doing, 
that doesn't sound too bad. No, and and, and the big thing, like this is like the fifty to one hundred bucks. Like it's it's not bad. Like anyone should be happy getting a fifty to one hundred bucks. You know, if it's you know their side geek, if they're not life's not depending on it. But for me, like the biggest thing was. Like I'm working at night, you know what I mean, I, on the weekends and like I'm bartending and you make my normal money, but I have all this time during the day and like, yeah, like I'll hit the gym and whatnot, but if I have some more time and I can hustle a little bit more and make just a couple more bucks, you know, why not? And, you know, big gains are awesome, but like you said, these small little ones will, will fill up over a week and then, you know, it's an extra two, two fifty, and, and I, and I'll run with it. Um, but yeah, no, I get what you're saying. It's not necessarily, maybe smalls and I might not be the right word, but, um, I don't know. Just I don't know what the right <laughs> word is either. I think it just kind of shows the industry as a whole where you know when you actually stop and think about it, I mean the industry actually makes people $50. That's all you made. I don't and you as a listener, you probably think the same thing. This guy's talking about $50, but wait a second. I don't know what word you're supposed to use either. Maybe I would call it efficient. 50 I, I don't know what it is, but it's just kind of one of those weird things that summarizes sort of all the marketing and the brainwashing that goes on out there because when people start to scoff at, oh, well, such and such made this and such, it's just like, okay, well, that's fine. But I love what you said. And then go chase that. And you know what? That's where you're going to be. You're going to be chasing that quite a while uh, because, well, I'm not saying that's impossible. Uh, social media is a sketchy place. I'll, I, I will leave it at that. Before I forget, you mentioned that in the afternoon, sometimes you'll come back and open up some contracts. So, I mean, I, what what exactly is going on in that regard? Are you talking swing trades? Or are you still doing uh, option? Or, I mean, are you doing day trades with those options? But, uh, you know, this afternoon trading where you come back and open up contracts, like you said earlier, walk me through that a little bit more. So, there, there's swing trades, but I just want to circle back just for just a second I'm on that $50 to $100 thing. Sure, um, sure. One thing also that I, I will preach to anyone at any time. Um, even though I'm only making that fifty to hundred bucks a day, the biggest way I'm getting paid is Stop low stress. Stop saying only. See, uh, you well, did I, it again. Well, I'm only I, making. I, see, we're all brainwashed well, forty. <laughs> well, but but I'm just trying to hit this home. Like, it's oh, I, I know I'm giving, be, I'm giving you a hard time. No, I, I get you. But I know, like, I might be just you know getting that or or, or anything like that. But the biggest thing for me personally, and I think this is with a lot of traders, is you're also getting lower stress, which in my form is like a is a is a form of payment. It's making my job easier. It's just making my life easier. The stress is what c- will kill you in this game. It will absolutely destroy you. It will affect your personal life, your physical health, anything. So just take the 50, 100 bucks, be grateful for it. Know that you made the trade co- done correctly. And don't be stressing if you missed out, if it could have kept running or, or whatever, or if you're trying to stay in the trade longer to hit this huge home run, but you're stressing for hours and hours because it's like right under the teeter top of, of the top and you don't know, and you're just like frantically looking back and forth and you don't know where to take profits. Just be happy with what you got, take it and, and be happy that you're not stressed out for the rest of the day. Like that trade is over, move on with your life. Do not dwell on trades. I just got to say that because stress in the trading world has definitely affected me over the years and I've been lucky enough to realize it and just kind of tweak it so it doesn't affect me personally. I just I just I really want to – because stress is such a killer. No, that's I, – I mean I think we could have probably a whole podcast on that very topic. And you made a great point is, okay, trading is hard so, and if you're stressed, that's going to make – not only trading harder, but any job harder. So if you're trading, which is hard, and then you have stress, which is making trading, which is already hard, that much harder, why not just trade in a way that's not stress or that's not stressful? So like you said, kind of by definition, by removing stress from the, the picture, that's all of a sudden making you a better trader in and of itself. And I mean, and so it's kind of like almost a circular logic there where just by removing that component, uh, you can almost buy, I don't want to say guarantee yourself profits, but you're actually making profits that much easier because you're content. You, you, you feel comfortable with the, 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 the position sizes and you know, you, you, but 40 is absolutely right. You got to kick stress to the curb. And I will attest to it, it's weird how, I mean, yes, we sit here and in theory, it should be shut down the computer, move on with your day. Trading's over, but that's in theory. In reality, if you're if you're trading with a with a way that's going to produce stress, then yeah, that that stress unfortunately doesn't just 
turn off with a computer. It's still going to be with you and it can, uh, it, it can lead into your personal relationships, maybe uh, your career. So it, it's physical definitely, health. yeah, physical health. Exactly. Health is, or stress is definitely yes. not good for your health, but if you can, and that's, that's the hidden wealth in being, you know, just confident and comfortable in your trading because there you, and really, as I stumble over my words, it's hard to explain, but 40 is 100% on the ball uh, because when you don't have that stress, that is actually worth a lot of value. And I think really maybe the only way to realize that is you just have to go out there trading in a way that has you stressed out of your mind, and then you'll appreciate what 40 and I are saying. But that's really the key is you got to eliminate the stress. And I, I love the way you do it, 40. You, you just take what the market gives, but you uh, you, you kind of quantify that or you, you bring a realism to it via you're actually paying yourself with it. So your account uh, is never expanding, right? I mean, your account stays, it is what it is, but you're pretty much, yeah. But your life is, uh, you know, not expanding in the sense of, well, now I, now I drive three Lambos, but it's, Hey, I just paid that extra bill. Hey, it's time to go on a vacation. And, and, and you're expanding in a lot of ways, but yeah, stress is uh do you have any more thoughts or cause yeah, I mean, you, Listen, you, you've definitely found that middle ground that a lot of people, unfortunately, never find. But I mean, did you, I mean, was there a trick or something that arrived to this? Did you take a huge loss or did you just finally look in the mirror and say, I'm sick and tired of this stress? I mean, because this is definitely a, a valuable conversation that really does pertain well, to, to I trading. Know, I don't know if it was necessarily a, a, a trick. I would kind of say it was just through, um, you know, through ex the experience of, of going through it. Um, I, I just would notice that I would end up sitting in front of my computer from 8.30 to 4.30 and staring at this. And then I start to feel like my back ache because I was in my chair for so long, my body. Or I'd go to the gym and I'd either have a bad morning because I, you know, had a bad trade or I was still in a trade. And I would, like, not be able to get through my workout because I'd always be looking at my phone or check this. And, like, there was just so much. And I would start realizing, like, my my life, the things I enjoy – like just going to the gym, going out to eat, um, things like that. They're being overshadowed by trading because I can't stay off my phone and stop looking at it or I'm too nervous or, you know. So basically for me, it was just to start cutting things out. So like I said, when I only trade for the first hour, hour and a half of the day, it's because I'm going to go to the gym after and I don't want to have them in the back of my head. I don't want to constantly be looking and checking my position in between sets, you know. I just – and I didn't want to be in a bad mood for the rest of the day because of that. So, you know, it was just me cutting out bad things, bad habits, bad whatever, and seeing how I reacted. So I don't keep trades open when I go to the gym. I don't let, you know, trades get past a certain loss point where it'll affect my mood for the rest of the day. I just cut the things that were affecting me out or I minimized them to the maximum. I, I, I know what you meant, but I think this is kind of the, the cruel irony is – what you said was bad habits, basically everything you listed. I mean, technically those are good habits. There's nothing wrong with being in a position and then going and doing something else. But along with that would come, well, it would be wise to be checking in on that position, checking in on that position. So that is, I mean, you can definitely go and do all that stuff. But what 40 is saying, and to which I 110% agree with, it's just not worth it. I, I as, as somebody else that works out, I don't want to be sitting there in between each set, checking my phone and wondering. And as I'm going through the agony of, you know, doing some sort of barbell press, oh crap, I hope that I, I don't want any of that. Yes, I realize I could be making money by doing that. But there's a practical side of things where it's just the peace of mind and not, and just being able to focus on something else from what I've learned is, is worth any dollar amount. So, I mean, none of, we're not saying that you shouldn't go and do that stuff. That would be wise to do all that stuff. That would be wise to have. Uh, you know, you, your mind be consumed by something. What if money is on the line? I mean, that I mean, it's money. So you, I, I hope that you're treating that very seriously and not just throwing it to the wind like some degenerate gambler. So what he's describing, yeah, is the wise way to go about it. But it's just a question of, is that really worth your time? Is it really worth all the other, you know, strings that are attached to it? Uh, and for 40, no, it's not worth that. For me, I agree. It, it's not worth it. When I'm at, uh, when I go to bed or, you know, when I'm done for the day, I, I'm all now just putting aside my retirement accounts. I, you know, I'm, I'm in cash positions. I don't need, Oh, I hope this doesn't gap against me or, Oh, I, no, I, whatever it is what it is. And, um, that is, uh, and before I forget, 
if you are like, no, I love to put on positions and go to the gym and I love to check in between every set. And I love to think about, you know, what may be going on as I'm doing my squats. Hey, that's cool. That's apparently your personal wiring is a little bit different than 40 and I's, but that doesn't, that doesn't make you wrong. But there, that is something that comes along with real life trading. And, and in all honesty, I mean, this is why I was excited 40 came back. And uh, I mean, this conversation, not to pat myself on the back, but when you talk with people that have literally, literally been out there grinding and surviving um, in the markets, this is the kind of real world experience you get. And uh, like I said, if you're new, I, I, I maybe we maybe it's it sounds like we're being over dramatic about things, but it, it's very real. And to be fair to you, I mean, you'd agree. Forty. The only way to really understand what we're talking about is you just kind of got to go out there and experience. I, I don't know if there's any way that we could actually describe perfectly what we're trying to describe. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. There's no way you can really you know explain this to someone if they haven't been in the shoes or haven't been going through this. Um, because like those people you're talking about that may like to put on a position and go to the gym, that's awesome. They might like to do that, but they also might not have the tr- same trading style as me or you. Like I said, I'm a, a faded rubber band guy, so I'm in and out quick. For me, it just wouldn't be logical. And the time frames I'm looking at, I wouldn't be able to leave my computer and you know go on about my day. Um, you know, I, it, it just the, you have to experience. You have to see for your own self and your own personality how you win trading mesh. You know. It's like two chemicals putting together, you know, there's so many different reactions you can have. No, that's absolutely and well said because it's, uh, there's a lot of theory and yes, theory is part of trading. Heck, I sell courses that are, are, are based a lot in theory of, okay, here's the support, here's the resistance, here's how you figure out is the risk worth the reward. And at the end of the day, yeah, that's just kind of textbook type theory stuff. It is needed, but there's also the practical side where you just need to get out there and do it. And I don't know, even if, Yes, there's strategies out there. I mean, Chez, uh, you know, he, he, those option farmer guys, you know, they they're, they always have positions on. But to your point, I mean, they're, they're, that's just totally different than us fader rubber band trader guys uh, are doing. Uh, so, yeah, that was a great, great conversation, great rabbit hole. Uh, if anything, if you want to circle back to that or ever, if anything else pops up, let me, uh, you know, by all means, we'll go back there. But as far as that question I asked you, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> so what is exactly is going on with your, your option stuff that uh, you do in the afternoons that you said sometimes you'll come back and open up some contracts? Walk me through that. Yeah, so um, I, I like to scan the markets in many different time frames, and sometimes I find t- time frames um, and set up some time frames that are, you know, a little bit longer than I would like um, when, you know, using my, my equity account. Um, I don't like to keep a lot of capital out there in general. Um, especially overnight and whatnot, even for a couple hours. So I kind of filled this this little void with option training, which I am still very new at. I just really want to, you know, say that again. I'm really new at option trading. I have had um, a a good amount of uh, I don't know if you'd call it luck. I've had you know I've had good returns. I'll say good returns over the last couple months. Um, been really going over them, really trying to figure out what works for me. And so when I come back, you know, midday, usually after the gym, around one o'clock, two o'clock, um, the daily action starts to unfold a little bit. And I start to see a little bit more patterns, especially when I'm looking at a daily um, chart. So sometimes I'll see these big runners or, or big gap downs. And I use options much like how I use equity trading. I use it on extremes. Um, so if I see, you know, you know, extreme moves or... Or even just certain patterns, you know, um, I start to use these for swings. I don't have to type a lot of capital. And um, it's, again, a low stress thing. I, I can put, you know, 500 bucks out there, 1000 bucks out there. Not really lose sleep over it, but, you know, could make a huge return. Um, just for an example, I think it was a month, maybe two months ago, I posted in the chat room. I think me and you talked about it quick. I had a, um, it, was a it was a Facebook puts. At about six hundred, five hundred dollars worth of contracts, ended up having almost nine hundred percent return in like three days. Ended up making six k. I do so, remember that. Um, I do remember that. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. I have. I think yeah. I have that screenshot somewhere. I meant to post it as like a shout out to you, but I don't think I have yet. So thank you for the reminder. But I, I vividly remember. I was like, oh, 40, killing it. Yeah, that was awesome. What was? Uh, walk us through the trade. What was the the, the premise on that trade? 
Um, yeah, so it was a put I, – I, I'll be honest because it was like a month or two ago. I can't remember exactly. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the chart real quick. I have the computer in front of me. But um, basically, I saw a setup, and I wanted to go short, and I did. And oh, let me just see if I can get this. And I bought some contracts. They weren't expensive. Um, like I said, they were, you know, it was like 500, 600 bucks worth. Like, I can't remember the exact dollar price. But yeah, it ended up moving uh, with me uh, in my favor. And this is when we had a huge, uh, you know, a lot of volatility in the market. And, you know, options volatility, I, I just love it. Uh, I made some really good gains in December and whatnot. But yeah, so it ended up being like a 6K return. Uh, I immediately took that money. I took 4K out. Um, and I, you know, just put it in my own life kind of thing, you know, just paying bills and stuff like that. Kept 2K in there. And, um, and yeah, actually, actually with that 2k, I put it into more puts on Facebook. It, I think it bounced. I, I don't exactly remember. This is going off the top, just my memory. I think it bounced and I went back in with puts at a lower put. I think it was, uh, I bought 127 puts, I think if I remember. And, um, I ended up taking about a $1,500 hit on that, which was one of my larger hits, especially after having such a large return and I just got out. But, um, and this is all in hindsight, but it actually ended up hitting below that. And I, I remember looking it up two days later and that $1,500 hit would have been a $27,000 gain. Um, <laughs> good old hindsight, man. Yeah. Good old hindsight. Right? So I'm not going to really dwell on that, but yeah. So like, I, I like options for that fact that you don't have to put a lot of capital out there overnight on risk and you can have great returns. And you know, those are very extreme returns. But you can still make a humble return. You can still make 20% very easily, you know, on a swing. And it, that just works for me. You know, having that low capital out there, again, the low, the not needing a lot of capital over, you know, days or weeks equals low stress to me. And that's really just plays into all my trading. If it's not stressful, if it makes sense, and if I can make a dollar, why not, you know? Um, so that's basically how the, how I've been using options, which has been very small, uh, small sizes, but decent, decent returns on, on, you know, daily, um, daily patterns, daily swings. Now I want to, for listeners out there, they're apples and oranges here. I heard the word easily and I, I know exactly what 40 means. Uh, but the, the kind of asterisk by that is if you know what you're doing, if you know how to properly read charts, if you know how to analyze charts, if you know how to kind of do all the many pieces that go into it then yeah, it doesn't take much for an option to move 20%. So that's what he means. But don't don't go out there and be like, I listen to that stock trading reality podcast and they're out there saying options are easy. No, that's not quite what he said. You don't, don't, don't apples and oranges this. Yeah, it's easy in the sense of options can move easily 20%. But in order to start to capture that 20%, there is a lot and a lot that has gone into 40's journey in order to, you know, like you said, he's not saying it's easy, but just don't re understand the context here. This is somebody that uh, has been in the market now a long time. And right, Forty, you, you didn't literally mean that options trading is easy and you're just going to make 20% as somebody that's brand new, right? I don't want to speak for you, but I'm assuming that's not what you meant. No, and actually when I say easy, I don't even mean the return of 20%. I mean easy as in Again, going back to stress because I don't have a lot of capital, it's easy for me to make these trades because not a ton of capital is on the line and I don't get stressed out. So when I say easy, it's I can easily let these profits ride. I can let this trade go without me you know, freaking out and standing in front of the computer. So actually, when I say easy, it's not even about the return. It's about the, the act of the trade itself. I, I love it. That <laughs> brilliantly explains why words matter. Um of course, words matter every, but especially in trading and the stock market. Because uh, now, would you agree though? Were we both right? Because options can, quote unquote, easily move twenty percent. I mean, that's not exactly a huge amount for an option to move. Are are we in agreement there? Oh yeah, absolutely. I made twenty percent on option this morning on spy. There we go. But to Forty's point, and I, I would probably uh, argue is the more proper and uh, the the right definition is yeah. If it just makes trading easy from a mental perspective. Then, then that's the key. So that's, and really that's what it boils down to when I, when I think about it, what makes the voice in your head, what makes just trading easy from a mental perspective? And for 40, uh, you know, he likes options. Uh, is it, I would assume it's just 
flat out because going into an option, uh, you're just going long, right? You're not. Are you shorting them all, at all or no? No, I'm not really selling many uh, contracts or nothing like that. Uh, I'm usually just, uh, yeah, going long in either puts or calls. Okay, so literally your risk is what you put in, you know, okay, that, that, that could be what I lose. And as long as you're mentally comfortable with that, then it's easy to deal with the trade. Is that fair? Absolutely. Because okay. like for, for just a, a quick example, remember when I was saying about the Facebook, how I went back in the second time and I lost that 1500 right on it. Yep. And it would have been 27. So that, um, that, that trade was out of my comfort zone. I don't usually put that much on for options, even though people might be like, oh, 2000 is not much for me for an options because the percentage swings so much. I don't like to lose that much. And um, I got out maybe a little bit premature. And I could have let it ro- ro- uh, you know, ride a little bit more and make that 27K. But I didn't because it was out of my comfort zone and it wasn't easy for me. Yeah, yeah. I know that. And that's, <laughs> that is exactly why position size matters because let's face it, Forty had the proper thesis. His premise was correct. What was incorrect was his trade management perspective as far as position size. And that's why Chez and I say over and over and over again, you could be a you could have a PhD in chart reading. You could have a PhD in the, you know, the finance and economics, and you could understand everything about trading. But if you put in too much position size and you cause stress because you have too much money, than, more money than you, what you really want to lose, all that other stuff goes out the window. And Forty's example perfectly illustrates that because he was right. His thesis, he was absolutely right, but he couldn't follow it because, as, as he said, it wasn't easy. Why wasn't it easy? Well, because he put too much in to begin with. Um, and, and that's, this is this is good stuff. Listeners, I realize that if you're brand new, maybe it doesn't seem like this is really good stuff, but I promise, get out there and you're going to be like, oh yeah, that 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 does actually make a, a, a very big difference. But I will say this and what I liked, and I have a video on this. I can't remember what I titled it, but I think how to actually make money in the market. So what do I mean by how to actually make money in the market? Well, using... 40s uh, example here, he made $6,000. Now, had he kept that all in his account, theoretically speaking, he hasn't really made $6,000. Why? Because it's still in harm's way. How? 40 could have gone, for example, and thrown all $6,000 into a trade and it could have went puff. And then all of a sudden that $6,000 is gone. He So he actually never made the 6,000. But how did 40 actually make money on that trade. Well, he took out $4,000. So $4,000 is what he technically kind of made on the trade because that's, a, 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 you know, there's realized gains versus unrealized gains. That's a very practical realized gains because by pulling out that 4,000, he has now removed it from harm's way. There is no way that from a trading perspective, at least he's going to lose that $4. It is out of the account. So just remember that as, as a trader, yeah, your account is going up. Oh yeah, I made this money. Yeah, that, that is true. But is that money still in harm's way? And if it is still in harm's way, meaning could you potentially still lose it? Well, then, I mean, you nec- from a budgeting perspective, you really haven't made it because, well, and let me let's say this. If you are running budgets and if you're doing plans based on money that's in your trading account, like it's going to always be there or it's going to grow, you're playing a very risky game with your personal finances because there is zero guarantee that that money is going to be there, let alone stay, you know, stay there. So, um, that is definitely a very wise move. If you want to actually truly, truly make money, you got to pull it out of the account because, uh, yes. you know, to forties, thank you for the, the, the honest answer. Yeah. Of that $2,000 that he still had from the original Facebook trade, $1,500 of it went poof. And, you know, so technically he made, uh, what you made about 5,500 or no 4,500 on the trade itself since you, you, you lost that $1,500 on it. But, uh, so how exactly? Op- yeah, how often do you uh, make the real money? AK, how much or how often do you pull money out of harm's way and take it out of your account? Well, that kind of depends on on, on what I'm making on trades. Um, so just to give you a couple like just real examples, like say in December and November, um, were fantastic. There was so much volatility in the market um, that, especially with options, that I was making a lot. So um, say November and December. I probably pulled out to, between the two of them together uh, around 10K, I'd say, uh, right around that. I'm pretty sure actually maybe just exactly 10K because I remember it was the whole numbers that I was pulling out. But um, 
And then, like, say the, the last two months for me, like January, February right now, have been a little bit rougher. And I've probably only pulled out like six to 800, I'd say. So, because um, I have been having a little bit of trouble these last two months. I haven't had the best returns. But um, so it kind of depends on, on what I'm making. Um, I'm not just pulling out a set amount every month. It just, you know, like I said, if I make a good trade and I make 200 bucks on this and I can spend this 200 on covering some bills or something like that, I will do that. Um, I'm not just re- really taking money out to take money out. It's a very direct um, action, a reaction from what I make um, on a single trade or, or that week or whatever. Um, just because kind of what you were saying about leaving gains in there. You know, you have these voices that come in your head and you might be like, all right, I made, you know, 5K on this trade. Let me leave it in there and I'm going to turn this 5K into 10K, 15K, whatever. And that sounds good. But like you said, poof, it could be gone. So I just constantly try to pay myself just so when I do make those gains, if I do lose them, um, I at least take some of it for myself. Uh, so it's not like, damn, I, you know, I just made this this 5K and now it's all gone. It's like, you know, I made this 5K. I take out three, four and you know, I lost a thousand, two thousand. So I just try not to let those voices get in my head about, all right, now you have an extra 5k. Let's make this into action more. And let's, let's snowball it, which you can totally do, but you know, pay yourself, enjoy, enjoy the money you made. Well, that, and that all circles back perfectly to what we've been talking about is, yeah, you can do that, but that's just more stress. That's just more chasing that you have to do. Uh, whereas if you, and that's the tricky part of the market is that's actually a great attitude to have when it comes to personal finances instead of, hey, I made 5,000. How can I go squander this somewhere? No, let me, I want to grow this 5,000 even more. I want to be wise with my money. And I, I find no fault in that. But just from more of the practical side, yeah, pull some of that out. Make sure you actually realize that gain because I, while I admire the attitude of I don't want to go squander, I want to you know, try to grow this some more go squander a little bit of it, pay yourself. I mean, go because of that is what really realizes those gains, but it's such a fine line out there because there's nothing wrong with the mentality of let, let, let's snowball it. Like 40 set let's keep on growing that. Yeah, but that is, that's good on a spreadsheet. That's a good thinking of, you know, ambition, but that that's the, the, the bad part of the market is it likes to take people's ambition and turn it around them, even though their intentions were, you know, as, as pure and wise from the start as possible. And also, when I say like pay yourself and all that, like I, I definitely mean like you know like enjoy enjoy the fruits of your labor, like you know definitely take some money. But you know, like like I said earlier, I'm not really growing my account too too much right now, you know. But I do want to. So part of the way I'm actually planning on, on growing this account without actually leaving money in the account, and this might sound kind of weird, um, I actually want to open a separate like actual separate um, I guess you'd say like just a, like a, a savings account at a bank. I do want to pay myself out of my trading, but I want to put it in the savings account and have this build up because I don't want to have more money just going directly into my trading account. I want to have it build up in a savings account first and then maybe take a percentage of that and put it back in the trading to help it grow. But through my own experience, when I leave my account and I don't take money out and it builds and builds, I start to put on bigger positions, which could possibly equal into bigger losses or wins. So... I still am looking to grow my account, just not directly leaving it in my account. I know that might sound weird, but this might be more of a mental game for myself. Just Does that make sense? I, I don't know. I, I'm about to find out. So uh, let's just say you make $10,000 and you're like, well, crap. I don't. You make $10,000, but you know you don't want to put on $10,000 trade. So like, well, but I still want to use that money for trading. So therefore, I'm going to put $5,000 of that into a savings account. Therefore... I have I don't have the choice anymore to make a big uh, you know a ten thousand dollar trade because the the ten thousand dollars isn't even there. So let me put it into a savings account uh, that's still for trading, but just not accessible for trading. And you know it can pick up some interest right there or whatever. Um, and then when you're ready, you could go back to that account and pull it back over to your normal trading account when you feel that you're ready to maybe take those bigger trades. Is that essentially your thought process? Yeah, kind of in a, in a way. So like. It's a little bit tough to explain. I'm trying to. Well, uh, from my understanding is way. you you've identified a problem in yourself in your psyche, whatever you want to call it, and that problem is you tend to take bigger trades than you would want to take if the money is there. It sounds like that's the core problem you're trying to avoid. Is that correct? Yeah. So I so I've actually looked back, and my biggest losses have come directly after my biggest gains. So 
that's kind of my thesis behind it is if I take those big gains that I, I get instead of trying to put it right back in the market and trying to, you know, make some money, I pull it out a little bit, calm down, you know, like, you know, recollect myself, keep doing what I'm doing. And then, you know, slowly trickle it back in because for some reason, whatever it is, I tend to always have my biggest losers within three days of my biggest winners. I don't know why. I'm guessing because my risk or my invincibility and my mental state goes up and I put on these bigger trades. I think I need to phase myself into these bigger trades slowly. No, that I mean, I, I that makes perfect sense. And I, I follow along is, but it, listener, here's here's why being honest with yourself matters so much. Forty's honest with himself and he knows, uh, not exactly maybe you, I, I think you're on the spot. You, oh, big win, confidence shows up, ego shows up. I got this all figured out. So that's, I, I'm assuming that has a, a, a big factor with it. But th- what think about what Forty's doing. I have a problem. What did he say? I have a problem. Not some external force has a problem. It's not somebody else's fault. Forty has a problem. It is his problem. But you know what? The beautiful thing is, and we, we've been saying this quite a bit, but when you're the problem, guess who the solution is? You. So what's Forty's problem? Well, if I get too much money in there, then I just start to take on too big of trades. So, all right, well, I'm the problem. That is the problem. How can I fix the problem? Well, let me open up another account and just take that money out and throw it in that account because, right, you don't want to spend that money anywhere else in your life, right? You still would have, you still want that money for trading. Is that accurate? In, in a sense, I actually, it's that or another investment, you know? Okay. All right. But I, the point is you're still looking to grow that money in one way or another, True. right? I mean, that's, exactly. that's not yep. like uh it's not like it's a Netflix bill type payment where it's just totally money down the drain. It's you're looking to potentially grow that money in one way or the uh, another. And yep. in order to ensure you give yourself that opportunity, well, you got to get it out of the, out of harm's way because you know that you have that problem, uh, but that is a very viable solution. I don't think that's weird. In fact, I think that's the epitome of why when you blame yourself, when you look in the mirror for your problems, you can actually solve problems because then you just realize that, well, I'm the solution too. And sure, I, that's, but I mean, I was going to say, well, that's kind of a hassle. But in this day and age, no, just it's click, so, click of a button, set up the ACH account, you know, the one-time thing and you, you transfer money back and forth. And that that's really not that big of a deal at all to just kind of out of sight, out of mind. It sounds like that's what you're trying to, to accomplish with that. Yeah, separate accounts, just like I have a different equity account and then a different option account. Keeping my money separate like that just for some reason helps me um, control myself a little bit better, I guess you'd say. Uh, and the- oh yeah, because you're not, you don't see the big number. That makes total sense why it would help you. I mean, if you don't see the big number, then why would you be, well, not only do you not see the big number, you don't have the big number. So therefore, how are you ever going to put on too much of a position size when that, you know, that money's not even available to you. So, I mean, it, it totally makes sense. Exactly. And either way, I have that money off to the side. And like I said, maybe another investment or something. Because, you know, I do want to venture into other investments later on down the road. I do have a couple of ideas. But um, either way, you know, that money's pushed off to the side. It's not in direct harm's way, as you said earlier. Um, so that's kind of my, my thought process behind having that separate account. Yeah, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. And... um. I'm trying. I, I think you know that was another good. I think we've searched all cavities of that. Uh, that uh, that sounds bad. That never mind. The, the rabbit trail. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what do you work for TSA oh, now, man? man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Goodness, goodness. Well, uh, I mean, did you have any other talking points that you wanted to bring up? We're at, we're we're going on an hour now. I, I mean, but um, we've covered a lot. But if there's anything else you want to bring up, I don't want to just cut it short because this is going great. But we try to hit hours or sweet spot, but yeah, is there anything else that you wanted to, to, to venture into? Um, let me think for that. Uh, you know, there, there's really not too much more. I just in general, let me ask this, yeah. let, let me ask uh, somebody that's brand new and somebody that's like, you know, this 40 guy, he's been around and not only has he been around, he, he, he's, he's, he survived. It's not like he's, you know, on, on his yacht, lighting up his stogies with hundred dollar bills, but He's been in a brutal, brutal environment known as the trading markets, and he is surviving. He is making money. So for somebody that's new and comes to you, and they're like, what, what would one bit of advice, uh, not that you would give yourself, but just to some new person, what would that bit of advice be? Because you are somebody that I would consider battle hardened. I mean, we don't have, we have a, a good amount, I suppose, in the community, but uh, you know, the battle hardened people like yourself that have, have survived this cutthroat, just br- brutal 
environment, what would be that one bit of advice you'd give somebody that's new and, and maybe just getting started or new and maybe done a couple of trades? I would say someone for a brand new coming to the market and like most people coming to the market have these grand ideas or dreams of um, easy money, you know, um, thousands of dollars every day and just these unrealistic expectations. I would say don't think like that. Just look for small little bits and try not to stress yourself out. Like life, enjoy your life. Life is not trading. Trading should be a small little cut of life and get educated. Like if you, the whole thing with trading is you just want to cut a small little piece out. And the best way to cut a small little piece out is with a sharp knife. So study up, know what you're talking about, learn what you're talking about and and just keep everything low stress. Sharpen your knife so you can cut that little slice out and keep on going with it. You know, take your little piece of pie, enjoy life. Don't let trading affect you personally. Um, don't let it majorly, you know, affect your financials unless it's hopefully positive. But just take little bits. Don't don't try to hit these home runs. Just get little bits. These little $50, $30 they add up, you know, at the end of every week, every five day week, you know, when you wake up on Monday, if you have zero dollars and if you go to sleep on Friday with let's say a hundred, 150 bucks, nothing much. And that's like 25, 40 bucks a day. Would you be happy with it? Yes, you would be. So just take it, be happy with it, enjoy it. Um, you know, and if, if you want to start getting larger down the road, that's on the road, just take that journey and enjoy every step and eventually you'll get there, but just don't make it into this big make or break you like, Trading should not control your life. Do not plan your life around trading. It should be a small piece. If you're working full time, that's fine. Work full time. If you're working part time, work part time. But if you have a couple hours a day that you want to hustle and make some extra money, get educated and get in the market. You know, take it. Um, just learn what you're doing, <laughs> and don't do not. I, I I keep circling back to stress, but it's such a killer. Stress will kill you in life and in trading. Stress is the worst. Just be easy. Take what you got. I mean, it'll literally, it'll literally kill you. It'll take, it'll make you lose money. And in a literal sense, from a, like you said earlier, a health perspective, stress is not good for you. So, I mean, um, if, you're I not, think, if you're not go feeling ahead. good, like if you, if you personally feel not good about yourself and you can link it to trading, you might even just need to take some time off. Trading's not for everyone. Don't think that trading is for everyone and anyone can do trading because that's not how it goes. You know, just what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this? I, I don't have any scientific data. And so this could totally be off. But I, I think I would make an argument that to give yourself the best chance at trading, because let's face it, there's always going to be areas of trading that are stressful because I mean, your money is on the line. I mean, so not that it's make or break stress, but trading is a very mentally taxing game. Do we agree there? Absolutely. Okay. So my logic is part of since it's so mental, you know, mentally challenging, then logic would dictate, all right, well, you want to have as healthy of a mind as possible. And all right, well, that brings the next, well, how do you get a, as healthy of a mind as possible? Sure. You got to get educated and all that stuff that you said. But I think just from a physical health perspective, I, I, I find it hard to believe. I, I just think it would be easier that somebody's fit in shape, healthy, physically speaking versus some, I don't know, maybe there's lots of 300 pound people out there that are successful traders. But I mean, I, I think there's a, there's gotta be some sort of correlation out there where, you know, how's your health doing? Because if, if, if you're not physically healthy, then that means there's stuff in your mind. That's not going to be healthy. Cause I'm, I'm not trying to turn this into the health podcast, but with all the processed foods and sugars and all this bad stuff out there, I mean, that's going to throw off your mind and mental fortitude and you need to really be firing on all cylinders. So you think would, as somebody that does work out, do you think that really, and I'm not going to say guarantee success as a trader, but do you think that factors in and plays maybe a bigger role than what some people give it credit for? Absolutely, man. You got to have a balanced life and that includes a physical, like your physical body. You know, it's, it's actual science that there's certain hormones and, you know, chemical imbalances in the body that can be induced through, you know, stress causing things. So, you know, if, if you don't feel healthy, physically and you're not going to feel healthy mentally it's just it, it's just a fact like i not to sound like ignorant but i don't really know anyone that's you know o, you know obese and or has these like you know weight um issues that 
are mentally happy 100%, you know, um, I think it's 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 just a balance of life all all together. Whether it's trading, whether it's physical, whether it's just like your relationships with people in your life, you just got to keep it well balanced. And this is my other, and I don't know, maybe this. Well, we're over an hour, or so people that are annoyed with us, they probably turned it off. So I don't think I'll offend anybody at this point. But I don't know. Maybe this is crude. Maybe I'm a jerk. But if you cannot balance a diet plan, meaning you know, shed some weight based off what you eat. I'm not saying you have to go and pick up boxing or go to the gym eight hours a day. That's not what I'm saying. Just from an eating perspective, if you cannot mentally force yourself not to grab that sweet treat, not to grab that deep, deep fried snack, not to eat something that you know you shouldn't be eating, then what in the world makes you think you're going to be able to deal with all the mental voices that show up with trading? Trading and eating I, I feel there's a lot of correlations there because in eating, you have all the voices that show up, eat me, eat me. I, yeah, I know you're, you're bad. I know you know that I'm bad, but still just eat me. And you got to learn to say no to stuff. You got to learn to, no, that's not good for me. Just like in trading, you have all sorts of voices that show up. And if you can't say no to them, your account will go to zero. So good. for me, it's just like, if you can't get healthy, if you can't prove that you can't even eat the proper stuff, then what? There's no way that when money is on the line and all the mental pressures that brings, I don't know. Like I said, I don't have any scientific data, but maybe I'm just a jerk. But I don't see how anybody has any chance at all. If you can't get your eating right, how are you ever going to get any sort of trading right? Do you the, at least that's see the gold. tree I'm barking up? That is gold. That is that is absolute gold. That is that, the between the voices in your head where you're going to eat that extra honey bun or that extra tray that you shouldn't trade yeah, that is that nice gold. sprinkled donut oh my look at that donut 40 that thing looks so good but it's not a it's not at the weekend so i can't have it and you got to just learn to say no i can't have it i mean Absolutely. all right good so I'm, I, i'm glad i'm not you know off the deep end there but I, to me there's lots of parallels because uh i like that i like that a lot that that little correlation between uh the voices in your head whether it's eating that extra you know donut or or taking that bad trade i like that Maybe that because we always say it's like, well, it's hard to explain the voices unless you get out there and trade. But now that I'm like, that's why I love these welcome back podcasts because it's a lot more just we're just having a conversation, but which allows me to just think out loud. And it's like that maybe. Yeah, I, I think that there that might be a way to try to explain people the trading voices is have you ever tried to get healthy with your eating? You've met some voices then those voices, you know, have a lot of other forms. But that one uh, would you agree, though, that hurt. if you yeah, if you can't get your eating right then you have no business trading. I mean, I, I I realize that's kind of a cut and dry statement, but I don't know. The more I think about all this, I, I think that's a pretty, I, like I said, I can't say it's factual based. I don't have a statistical study on it, but it makes sense at least. You know what though? It, it all boils down to habits. You know, if, if someone's going to the gym as a habit, you can tell, you can look at them and tell, you can tell they're, by their body, they go there, their habit. This is not a one time. It's not impressive when someone goes to the gym one time, two times, three times. It's impressive when someone goes to the gym every single day and does, this, you know, and that grinds it out. And that's the same with trading. It's not impressive when someone makes a big home run or a big trade. Cool. We all get lucky big deal it's impressive when you can do those maybe not big gains but those small gains day after day it's about the habit you boil it down to the habit and i like that for i'm I'm about i'm about ready to run through a wall right now man that that's good stuff (laughs) that's so true yeah you know i go to the gym you mean you went to the gym for a week oh yeah i just made a big trade yeah that's i mean don't get don't get 40 and i wrong that is awesome that you are going to the gym that is good that I mean, not necessarily good that you made a winning trade because that'd be that could be totally luck. But at least you're in the your heart's in the right spot. You're, you're trying to grow your money in the market. You're trying to get your health right. But at the end of the day, to piggyback off forty, yeah, well, talk to me in several months from now. How 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 are your what are your behaviors leading behaviors leading you to? Because if they're bad behaviors, they're not going to lead to good habits. And so you got to start with making sure you know how to behave, and then you behave enough. That will turn into a habit, which, you know, the, the goal obviously being have that be a, a good habit. Um, but all right, 40, we got to wrap things up, man. We could talk all day <laughs> long, but I got I I honestly have stuff I got to do. So uh, but we got to wrap this up. And I know you got to what do you do at the gym, though, real quick? Uh, you said you were there for like an hour and a half or is this like a boxing slash lifting set or what is a, a normal gym workout? 
Um, so no, actually, so with Box and I haven't had a fight in two years. Um, I had a, a tour labrium, and I, I actually took two fights after that, and I, I just took way too much damage. I have problems uh, with my left arm now, uh, hand placement. But so now, um, for the first while, I was just getting back my strength because I always had to walk around at 152 pounds. So now I'm actually 180. Um, nice. so I've gained a lot of weight, but, um, I'm doing a lot of compound lifts. Um, I've got my flexibility back in my shoulder. Um, and I guess now I'm more leaning towards, I wouldn't say powerlifting necessarily, but I'm definitely going for weight. My goal for two at the end of uh, 2018 was to be over 300, um, in all major compound lifts. So deadlifts, squats, uh, flat bench and such. Um, and I've hit everything except for flat bench. Flat bench, I'm stuck at 285 for my max. I was gonna but... say, well, still 285 on the on the bench. That's that's still impressive. I mean, yeah. now on, on the squats, are you going down all the way? You're not doing one of these quarter squats, are you? No, no squat. I I usually put will put a bench behind me, and my ass will. T- I mean, my uh, my butt will touch it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no that that one. I'm in mid threes, and then deadlifts. I can almost hit 400. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've just been repping. Th- I got to just increase the deadlift, but for me, it's like, I'm just doing it to be healthy. So in order to go above 300, I'd have to go and grab more weights, but I have all the, you know, the Olympic size weights. So I just rep 300, but so I don't, I don't know what mine's going to be, but yeah, man, that's awesome. 300 on all those uh, almost. So, well, well, for me, it's, I have to, ha- I have to grind towards something. I have to have a goal or a competition. So I set a number and that's kind of what fuels me. Um, well, how about, how about yourself? What are you usually doing? Uh, yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm all, see, I'm kind of lazy. I'm like, all right. I mean, I like the gym. I like to work out. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, I don't want to be here for two hours. So how can I make this as efficient as possible? Oh, really? There's these things called compound movements. Oh, really? A compound movement works like almost every muscle in your body. That sounds good. So I'm all about the compound movements. Uh, and, o- just- and also, what takes me a while, though, also, I will say, just because I'm not, summer starting to come up, I am, I am shredding up a little bit. You know, I'll, I'll bang out three, five miles on a run, and that kind of takes up a lot of time, too. But no, um, that's awesome. That's, but- you know, I never realized, and I guess I'm just ignorant, but um, my brother in law, who went to the Naval Academy, but part of the Naval Academy is it's mandatory. You have to take boxing for like a semester or something like that. And I, I guess I never really, but he was just like, cause I did wrestling in, in gym class way back in the day. And I still remember wrestling being like the most exhausting thing ever. And this is a little context. You know, I played all sorts of sports growing up and I, wrestling was ridiculous. And then Matt, who's my brother-in-law, we were, we were talking, he's like, he's like, Oh, boxing is even worse. I'm like, boxing. What? And, but the, what, when he's, he's like, well, yeah, think about it. You got to keep your arms up the whole time. You always got to be moving. The mental fortitude you have to use, because think about the amount of pressure you're under. Like you're literally at threat is getting punched in the face. So you have all that mental pressure, the mental you know, strategy that you got to put into place and you got to be moving around and you got to keep your arms up and you got to throw punches and you got to absorb punches. He's like, no, even compared to wrestling, it is the most tiring thing he's ever done. And, and this is uh, this is a guy that's in really good shape. So, um, I guess that's interesting. Ig- ig- ignorance on my part, but I did not realize that boxing was, I mean, I knew it was, was, was physically taxing, but, um, to hear that from a guy that is in super, super good shape. Um, yeah, that's so 40. Well done, man. I, I, I'm not, well, I, I guess that was this, my, though. yeah, go ahead. I actually disagree with him. Really? Yeah, I um. So I I've wrestled before too, and I, I why well, we call it rolling. It's uh, a jujitsu, but um, the body and body grind is more tiring for me because it's that constant grip, that constant pressure. With boxing, if I get tired, I can circle out, throw my jab a few times, keep him at bay. You know what I mean, and kind of take a breather and maybe circle around the ring. Um, wrestling, it's like you don't really even break your hold on each other. It's a constant body on body grind. So, you know what, maybe he has a different, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe he has a different body style than me or a different, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, me. I see, I disagree with you because I think it all boils back to risk tolerance, like trading in wrestling. There's no threat that somebody's literally going to punch me in the face. So from that mental perspective of, holy crap, I could be getting punched in the face here any second. I better keep my mind in the game. That's gotta be mentally exhausting. And that's only the mental portion. There's the mental portion of just the risk of getting punched in the face. There's no mental portion of strategy. There's no mental portion of anything else. That's just fact. So I don't know, but um, yeah, punch in the face. after the first few hundred punches, it doesn't <laughs> a matter. A few hundred. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh man. All right. We are. All right. Listen, I said this like 10 <laughs> minutes ago. We have to end this 40. Stop dragging me on, even though I know I asked you a question that took us down this rabbit hole, but uh, 40, I, I don't, we can't have, we can't wait like another year to have you back because this was really good. Chez is going to be oh. bummed that he missed this. This was a good conversation, but uh, when, whenever, just let me know. And you know, I, I never have a problem coming on. It's always a, it's always a fun time. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably see you at the next meetup too. So yeah. You know, hey, yeah I was, okay. We got to cap this at 60 seconds. So the next meetup is going to be in Michigan this summer. So are you, have you been to Michigan before? And if not, no. will you, will you come to Michigan? Yeah, I'll come to Michigan. Uh, what part? Your part or yeah, yeah, right up. We're gonna get someplace like right on the beach of uh of, of Lake Michigan. It'll be. Have you ever seen American Pie too? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay, yeah, it's uh, there's actually an aerial shot in that movie of where we kind of want to have it. It's called Grand Haven, but uh, yeah. Hey, that's awesome. I've always wanted to see one of the Great Lakes. It, it blows my mind that it looks like an ocean. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll it, it'll blow your mind for sure. All right, cool. You're gonna go to Michigan. You're gonna. So I'll see you this summer. Is the moral of the story. Uh, but Do you know hey, a man, month? Just curious. Uh, no, we haven't thought that far ahead. Why? Is there a month we should avoid? Well, I didn't, I didn't know if you were like thinking like beginning like May, June, or if you're thinking more towards no, the end, like it'll, August. It'll, we'll, we'll probably play it. Yeah, safer pie. Like uh, I'm thinking August or September. Um, but yeah, I don't know yeah, yet. No, this no, summer, not a problem. That, I'll go either way. That all right? Good because yeah, you, you, you're. I mean, I like Megan a lot more. She's way cooler than you are, but I, I, I can <laughs> put up, true. I can put up with you. I mean, so, but in all seriousness though, thank you very much for hanging out. Great perspectives, great conversation. And, uh, we better end this before this thing goes on another 15 minutes. Cause I just, <laughs> I just want to keep talking, but thank you for hanging out 40. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's always a good time for your listeners out there before you go. A final few requests. First off, if you're listening on YouTube, remember there are lots of other videos on the channel, check those out. And hopefully you ultimately decide to subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on iTunes or any of the other podcast players, please subscribe. And especially on iTunes, if you could leave us a, a positive comment and a rating that really helps us out and goes a long way. And then finally, if you're listening at claytrader.com, uh, that, uh, we hit that share button then down below, leave us a, a comment. We will read those and we will, uh, interact with them. So Chez, get, but get better, buddy. Sorry about that chicken breast. 40, thank you again. And to you as listeners, we will see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com. <laughs>